Hello, welcome to this video tutorial for DT Register 2.7 Event Management. Uh, this video is based on version 2.7.0 and we'll be going through uh, the event creation process. Uh, we've already had a video entailing uh, this event management layout and how things are set up here. So we're going to skip those details and jump right now into creating an event. So I'll click New in the toolbar. Now you see I have a number of tabs here for various items. Um, they'll be covered uh, throughout a couple different videos so you can get specific to what video you you need to see to get to the details you need to find. Uh, here on the general tab you have you start with the event owner which gives you a drop down list of all the users on your site. Um, this is who will be given ownership status of the event. Then on the front end this person will be listed as the moderator of your event um, if you choose to list a moderator. That is a setting within the configuration of DT Register. If you wanted to change the word moderator, you would do that in the language file. Okay, so then you got event type, new event, or J event sync. Uh, if you don't have J event installed, you will not see the J event sync option. Uh, if you do, um, you have the two options of how you can pull your events in. Uh, J event sync is how DT Register always worked prior to this version. Uh, you would create the event and uh, within J events calendar, and then here in DT Register, you would add all the registration functionality to it. Uh, but the title, date, and time came from J events. You can still use it in that way if you want to. You would here you would select J event sync, and then you'd be given a drop down list of uh, events from J events uh, that you could add registration details too. It'll pull in the title, the date, and the time right here um, and you will not be able to edit it as it comes from the other component. Uh, then uh, for the events to be pulled in from J events, they would have to be published, they would have to be not already over, uh, and they would have to be a non-repeating event. So uh, you'd have that same kind of restriction as before. But if you want to uh, use the full functionality of DT register just hit new event it'll make it completely um, disconnected from J events or any other component uh, so let's make a title then event category is optional you don't have to use one but we're gonna pick seminars here uh, location is also optional but any location that you have configured in the location manager will show up in this list uh, publish the event yes or no uh, then your font, your time format, 12 or 24 hour time format. Then you have your start uh, time, end time, and the date. Uh, so I'm going to use this and I'm going to pick a time, let's say uh, December 15th, and we'll go to uh, December 16th. And then for the, the time, you also, of course, here you see the little red X, which is showing. Uh, what I've set up is invalid yet. I do need to specify time. You have this little tool here that will help you. If you click the button in the middle, it will put the current time, and then you can use the arrows to uh, specify or to, to move things around. Uh, or you can also just type on it as well if you don't want to use the arrows. And so over here, let's just change this. Okay that works alright and once your time selection is all valid you will get the blue check over here uh, letting you know that everything's good obviously you can't set the end time and so forth before the start time and things of that nature uh, notification email here is um, you put in an email address of who's gonna get notified whenever somebody registers for this event uh, this could be more than one email you can put a semicolon and then uh, another email address that is fine and then you have a uh, repeat options uh, we're gonna get to the repeat options uh, here separately you're gonna skip that for for right now um, the registration types to allow individual group or both um, that I think is pretty self-explanatory let's just mark it to both uh, if you have it on both once the uh, user clicks to register they'll be given an option of individual or group and then continue from there then within group registration you have two options now you have a simple 
and a detailed registration option. Simple group registration is a newer feature um, which will allow you to just enter the number of members in your group or the number of tickets if you're selling tickets um, and then you'll proceed to the final contact and payment. Um, if you do detailed group registration you'll enter the number and then you'll proceed to enter uh, data that you configure for a form for member one then member two member three and so forth and then come finish with your final group contact and payment information uh, so you have those two options now let's mark it as simple uh, event status public or private if it is private everyone will still see it but they'll have to be logged in to be able to register then your event capacity you can leave that blank or you can put something there if it's blank it'll be unlimited let's just put 50 uh, minimum group size that is for a group registration uh, you can you can supply a number here for what's the smallest number of people that you will allow to be in a group registration uh, of course two would be your uh, number to start with that is the default uh, so let's just say uh, five let's say we want to have at least five people to be able to do a group registration uh, maximum size that can uh, say 25 both of those are optional you don't have to put anything in there uh, registration open date and cutoff date these are also optional um, pretty much everything down here on this bottom half is optional um, so a lot of so you can just skip by if you don't need to do any of this and and go on from there registration open date is uh, allows you to specify maybe a postponed date to open registration if you don't put anything here the event is immediately open for registration once you create it so here we set a December 15th event let's say we'll open registration on uh, November 29th so uh, up until then there will be no registration option and let's say uh, the time uh, we'll just open it at 10 p.m. Um, all of the date settings within DT register uh, that have been there previously now have time options so you instead of saying it opens on the 29th at midnight now it's, it opens at the 29th at 10 p.m. Um, cutoff date that is the registration will go up until the event uh, until the event starts uh, but if you specify a cutoff date you could say well let's close registration uh, a couple days before the event starts and we're going to close it at 2 o'clock p.m. on that date okay then you got um, uh, once once the cutoff date hits the event will show as closed in the in the event list okay waiting list you can enable or disable um, if you disable the waiting list and the event is full uh, the user will just see a full event message uh, that you configure on the messages tab uh, if you enable this then what will happen is underneath that full event message the user will see the actual registration form they'll go through the full form just like they are registering for the event so it'll calculate how much it would cost and uh, you know get all their information for all the field choices and so forth but then their record will be created with the status of waiting uh, which is a, a new status option and so they will show up as a waiting record and then uh, that way if space becomes available you can move them from a waiting status into say a pending status so you just go on the back end make that status change uh, if you have your status change email enabled they'll automatically be notified that uh, their status was changed and you can you know set up how, whatever policy you need to to let people know okay you're now a pending registrant but you need to come and pay your your fees which can be done through the user panel uh, prerequisite categories and events you do have the option here of specifying prerequisite items meaning the user cannot register for this event unless they've already registered for one of these selected items so um, any other event that is available is going to show up in this list so I could uh, click on it um, to say they have to have first registered for this event before they can register for uh, my new event 
or if I select a category, that will say they have to have registered for any event in that category before they can register for this one. If you happen, uh, if you're going to use prerequisites, be aware that this will force this event, even if marked public, it will force this event to require login to be able to register. Um, so just be aware of that. So if you select something and you decide you don't want it selected, you can use control click to deselect it or um, on a Mac that would be a command click and that is mentioned here in the tooltip as well. Um, the details article, this you can select section, then category, and then select an article and this will assign that article to be the details for your event and um, then that article will automatically have if you have our event link plugin installed and enabled um, a register button will show at the bottom of that article here the item ID override um, DT register will attempt to locate a, a menu item for your articles category like a blog style menu item something of that nature to use for the details link. Um, if the item ID that it is using is not what you want, then you can come in here and provide the item ID number that you want it to use. Sometimes you have to do this uh, if you're using uh, the core Joomla SEF. Uh, you may have an issue with that, so you need to apply the item ID if you do have an issue. Then the, the details link, you can turn that on, and what that's going to give you is like what you see here. On the event listing, the details button uh, will take you to the article that has been selected for details for that event. Uh, let's keep going here. The attendees button is like what you see here on the front end, which will give you a list of all the current attendees of the event if you turn that on. Duplicate prevention override. Uh, that is uh, The duplicate prevention is something that you enable in the main configuration. If you want to override that setting, just for this event, you can do that. Um, overlapping event check is another setting from the main configuration area. Here you can you can override that setting also per event. So I can say, okay, override the overlapping event check. Um, don't check other things when I'm registering for this event. Or you can exclude it, uh, exclude this event from that check, meaning if somebody's registering for another event, don't check this event to see if it conflicts. So you can uh, override or exclude, so you can come at it from either direction. The Joomla user auto creation previously was a global setting that you could turn on and it would apply to all of your events. Now what it is is a per event setting uh, that you can turn on and you can also decide if it's required or optional. If you set it as required, it will show on the form giving the user a username and password field so they can create a Joomla login account. If I make this optional, then uh, the field will show, but they will not have to do that. Then you have the event image, which allows you to create a thumbnail like what you see here that shows to the left of the event details. You would simply click Browse, find the image on your computer, hit Upload, and it will show the image thumbnail right here next to this location. And then after you save, the event uh, settings, then that is stored and uh, loaded as part of the event. Uh, then on the front end, when you click the thumbnail, it does show the original full version, uh, but it just shows your thumbnail here. Uh, so that's the, the general uh, settings for the event creation. Um, the other options as far as setting up the fee structure and other things will be covered in other videos. So. Uh, Make sure you check out those other videos to see the remaining details of event setup and also as well as repeating options. Thank you.